So we're going to need to be pretty real in this video because it's been five years since the NVIDIA Shield TV Pro and the NVIDIA Shield TV Tube model has come out. And I haven't seen a lot of videos that talk about the honest truth. If the NVIDIA Shield TV is really worth purchasing in 2024 at full price, now, that's what I'm going to do as a little caveat here. So we're going to look at some of the comparisons compared to other devices in 2024 devices that have come out really previously that maybe can compete with the nvidia shield tv and a bunch of other aspects i think you need to account for now if you're new to the channel hit the subscribe button right down below give this video a big thumbs up and let's get into it okay so the first thing i wanted to cover is performance because as a five-year-old device how is it keeping up with the newer devices in the market now this is a cpu benchmark test that basically pushes the cpu of every device to its max and aft does a really great job putting it into this nicely sorted chart now even with the fire tv cube coming out nearly three years later the 20 the the fire cube 3 and the fire tv cube 2 you know, coming out around the same time, they're around the same CPU score. Now, I know we see a pretty big difference here between the Shield TV uh, and like the Fire Cube 3, which the Pro version is in there. Uh, you have to remember at a certain point, it's only going to matter so much. So uh, these scores being so close, yes, there is a big jump when we look at the multi-core use of like the Shield. Let me just go ahead and move my face here. Uh, like the Fire TV Cube 3 and let's say the highest performing shield or the Fire or the Pro right here. Um, however, that difference when you stream and do most tasks on these devices is not going to make a huge difference. Now, it still outweighs most of its competition otherwise, like destroys all the sticks, of course, but that's expected, right? It is a bigger device. It's a more expensive device. We have to account for that. But when we go down and we look at GPU score, this is where the shield is still going to reign supreme bar none because you have to remember these are kind of created more as gaming devices than streaming yes streaming is why a lot of people purchase it but it is really in that retro gaming niche market or cloud gaming market where it's kind of sold as a bit of a console but it's not at the same time um, so yes in 2023 2024 there is still nothing that can compete with its gpu score but there's some other factors i want to talk about now, I think one of the biggest factors is typically devices and even like gaming consoles last around five years, right? They have a five to sometimes they can push that eight year lifespan, but I think especially streaming devices, five years, and then you want to get a new model out there. Typically, it's a lot sooner for a lot of these companies, but one like the Shield, I think that has a longer shelf life. So being 2024 and it now being that five year window, it makes sense if they're going to release a new device that they should do it pretty soon. So that means if you're thinking about purchasing a Shield in 2024 when they are not on sale, you can most certainly expect a new device to come out and then you would have paid full price for probably what the new device is going to charge. But there's one other little piece of proof I wanna look at here to show you that they're probably done with this version of the Shield. Okay, so I'm on my Nvidia Shield that I've had for almost literally five years. But if we go to our device preferences and we go to the about and we look at system upgrade, uh, what you're going to notice is the last time there was an update. So it was last checked on March 2nd, which was the last time I had done an update. What I want to point out that Shield Experience 9.1.1 was actually released. Yeah, get this at the end of 2022. That means we went all of 2023 without seeing a system experience upgrade. And that usually only means one thing. So here, just to further show you, this is when the last update came out. And I actually remember doing a video about it. So it's been over a year since I've been able to give you guys any videos on what's going on with the NVIDIA Shield. Because the truth is we, we really don't know what's going on with it, which is obviously pretty frustrating for most people. Now there is actually some forums on NVIDIA's uh, official forum that kind of talk about, you, you see people allude to the fact that they believe as well that this is end of life, uh, mostly because of the fact that we haven't seen an actual OS update in again, over a year at this point, like we're talking a year and a half basically now. So yes, although the Shield is still one of the top devices, 
when we account for the fact that they're probably coming out with a new version or they're completely done with it, which is worst case scenario, is it actually worth buying it? Now, we also have to account for the price. Surely being an end of life device, no updates in a long time, it has to go on sale a lot. But in fact, when we look at it, Nvidia is one of the worst devices to ever go on sale. They never go on sale. This is one of those strategies where they're like, we're gonna keep it full price no matter what, and you're gonna pay for it. Because the Pro still goes for 200. You maybe see, see it on sale once a year. The Nvidia Shield TV version, goes for 150. And when you look at the rest of the market, this is the premium of the premium. It's not only the oldest, but it's the most expensive because you can get your hands on a Fire TV Cube 140, but right now it's even 114. Like it goes on sale every second week. You can get your hands on a Fire Stick 59.99. They go on sale every second week it seems like. So you're not even getting the best deal with the Shield TV anymore. And you're honestly talking to a guy that still has said the shield is the best device but i think at this point you can no longer call it the best device or the best deal or the best for its price in fact it's just a device that's at end of life yes you're going to get better performance than the fire tv cube and those other devices but is it going to be enough to justify the fact that you're going to have an outdated device in a few months I probably don't think so. Now, don't get me wrong. The Shield still has a ton of features that other devices really can't get on it. And one of those, of course, if we go into settings here and we head down to device preferences and we could go to display and sound, it has AI upscaling, which has been one of the more unique features. I was looking at the wrong camera there for a second, if you guys noticed, uh, which is one of the most unique features added. Devices such as the Fire TV Cube 3, they added in, I think it's called Super Resolution. So they did go and create their own version of it. Now, as you guys know, if you have Fire TV devices and you watch the channel, Fire TV devices are starting to become a lot more locked, where it looks like they might even be moving towards their own dedicated operating system. So at least with the Shield, if you are going to get one, you know that you still have access to developers options. You can still do third-party installs. You can still do whatever you want with it because they don't restrict your use. They don't care about that. You know, they're like, we sold you the device. We're cool with that. Maybe we're going to push NVIDIA gaming on you a lot, but that's it, right? Other than that, it's your device. You use it how you want. Now, I feel like I've stirred the pot enough and I want to know your opinions down in the comments. Is the shield still worth buying? I'm going to put a poll up maybe next week sometime. Is it worth buying or at this point, are you just paying for something that's going to be completely obsolete in a few years? Because in my opinion, just get a different device, save your money, wait for that new version to come out. And if the new version doesn't come out, then you saved your money anyways on a device they no longer care about. If you guys are new to the channel, again, hit that subscribe button right down below. I'll see you in the next one.